Can Corla, um, the Taoiseach has just uh, informed uh, the House in response to Deputy Kenny um, that uh, the country now has the highest number of people unemployed ever uh, in our history, 300 and almost 328,000 uh, people. Now, last week uh, I asked the Taoiseach uh, as what was the cost to the Exchequer of uh, additional people who were unemployed uh, between social welfare payments and uh, lost tax revenues. And the Taoiseach has sent me a reply which I received this morning setting out those costs. He informs me that the 120,000 extra who lost their jobs in 2008, that the total cost of that in social welfare terms is 1,386 million for a full year, and that the cost in ter terms of lost tax is approximately 900 and another 960 million. Now, when you work out the figures, what that comes down to is that, is that every job lost in the Irish economy is costing the Exchequer 20,000 euro a year. So additional 36,500 lost their jobs in January has cost the Exchequer 730 million euro in a full year. That's what we're talking about. Now for the past number of months and yesterday, everybody has been fixated on the public expenditure and cutting public expenditure. And I acknowledge that public expenditure has to be addressed. But frankly, we are looking at the wrong problem. The problem that the government needs to look at and that everybody, including commentators in this country, needs to look at is what is happening in terms of lost jobs. Because if we continue to lose jobs at the rate that we are losing them, the government will not be able to keep up with that in terms of cutting public expenditure. The social welfare cost alone, the social welfare cost alone of the, of the people who lost their jobs last year, that's the 1.4 billion that now has to be paid for in the pension levy. That's the reality of it. Every additional job, 20,000 euro. So can I put it to the Taoiseach that, and he has talked here about the need to, to get some kind of a consensual approach uh, to dealing with the problems of the economy. The Labour Party is more than willing to engage with the government to come forward with ideas and to put forward ideas and to address solutions to get people back to work and to save jobs, because that's the real solution. And I think the figure that the country needs to be looking at and the government to be looking at now is not the public expenditure figure, it's the jobs figure. That's where it's at, because getting people back to work is the solution and saving jobs is part of the way to dealing with the problem. And could I suggest to him, perhaps, that he might address the situation in Waterford Glass? The 450 workers in Waterford Glass, if they lose their jobs, that's an additional €9 million Euro per year uh, in lost to the, to the Exchequer. So what I want to ask the Taoiseach, uh, I can call it, is this. Is firstly, will the government address the jobs issue with the seriousness that is now required? Uh, will he look at ways and means, and Deputy Kenny has suggested one suggestion, it's a suggestion that uh, school building programs have been suggested by the Labour Party for some time. There are others. We can, we can, we can uh, expand and develop these ideas, uh, I think, uh, here over, over time. But will the Taoiseach and will the government give priority to saving jobs and to getting people uh, back to work? Uh, and will he give that the central attention which it requires, rather than the fixation with public finances and public expenditure, which has been the case up to now? <coughs> can, can Corla, I think there's a fundamental flaw in the Taoiseach's approach to this, and it is where, basically, I disagree with you, Taoiseach. Uh, your approach to our problems seems to be, and I appreciate this is shorthand for it, stabilise the public finances uh, and the economy will recover. With the greatest of respect, I think it's going to have to be the other way around. You stabilise the economy 
and the public finances will recover. It's like pouring water into a sink. You know, there's no point, the more water you pour into a sink, unless you put a plug to stop it flowing out, uh, you're going to lose it faster than you're pouring it in. And that's what's happening here. I mean, you are concentrating uh, almost exclusively on the stabilization of the public finances, of cutting public expenditure. But the problem is, is that the rate at which jobs are hemorrhaging in the economy uh, is pouring it out the other end. In the month of January alone, that incredible loss of 36,500 jobs has resulted, and will result over the course of a year, of a cost to the Exchequer of 730 million euro. That, you know, that you're going to have to cut somewhere else. So unless we get people back to work, it's not, this isn't, uh, I mean, I think this is the nub of our economic difficulty. Unless we get people back to work, business moving and the economy growing again, we are going to have a problem that you won't be able to solve. And that is why I again say to you that the issue that I believe that we need to be addressing, um, and I acknowledge that public expenditure and that the public accounts and the public finances are, are, are part of the equation, I acknowledge that, but the real core issue that we need to be addressing is jobs, getting people back to work. And, and what we're not getting, I mean, you, you talk about the, about the stimulus, the government's stimulus plan. The government's plan is not a stimulus plan. The government's stimulus plan is essentially the capital program. Uh, it's the national development plan. It's what you would have been doing anyway. That's what you're describing as a stimulus plan. A stimulus plan means things that you do in addition to that in order to get extra people uh, into employment. And that's the issue that we need to be, uh, to, to be addressing. And the old fashioned thinking, and with all due respect, Stishup, I think you are guilty of some old fashioned thinking here in relation to square up the public finances and the economy will recover. That thinking belongs to yesterday. That's not what's being done in the United States. The concentration there is on addressing, getting the economy back on track, moving again. And yes, that is going to require uh, additional injections uh, into the economy, uh, additional effort, uh, different approach, lateral thinking in terms of, of people being, uh, being in employment. I mean, let's look at Waterford Glass. Again, and I put this to you, it's a, it's a, it's, it's a practical example of it. Uh, I mean, there are 450 people there. Uh, they're, they're keeping the furnaces going because they want to work and they want to, they want to keep the operation going. I think it's generally acknowledged that there is a future for, for Waterford Glass. It may not be as it was, but there is a future and there can be glass uh, making, making there again. There can be uh, an industry, it's one of these iconic uh, industries that is a symbol almost of the, of, of, of the country. If that's let go, apart from the, the, the loss to the national morale that will be involved, you're going to have to pay out 9 million every year. It's going to cost 9 million every year, according to the figures that you've just uh, supply, uh, supplied to us. So I think we have, to, you have to use, and your Thornished and uh, ministers involved in it, I think have to use some thinking to ensure that that industry survives, that the jobs are, are maintained. And I, again, I say to you, and I'm offering this, if you talk to this house, not about what you're going to cut, but what we are going to do to save jobs and to generate jobs, you will certainly have the support of the Labour Party. And that's the territory that we need to be in, because unless we do that, the problems that we have now in February are going to be an awful lot worse uh, by the end of the year, and you will be in a, we will all be in a situation where what will have to be cut will be an awful lot more than what was done yesterday.